welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Jen and I'm a stay-at-home mom of two and I create lifestyle content over here and as you could tell by the intro today we're coming up on Halloween really close and I've got some fun easy quick treats that you and your kids could make together in a pinch in a hurry most of these ingredients you likely already have on hand so let's get right into it. First up is probably one of the easiest Halloween things that you can do. <laughs> Grab a package of Oreos, get some white chocolate and some of those little candy eyeballs and you're good to make this. So the first thing I'm doing is just gonna go right ahead. I'm gonna melt one bag. I think this was a 12 ounce bag of white chocolate chips. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt that. You can use a double boiler to do this. I typically just put it in a non-stick pot on my stove put the heat on low and just stand there and watch it and it works just fine i haven't burnt it yet so fingers crossed and so the prep for this all you really have to do is lay out your oreos and get them ready to just spread the chocolate on top you can use a pastry bag to do this you could use a squeeze bottle if you have one of those you could just do this with like a spoon or a fork and just drizzle the chocolate onto the oreo however you want to do it totally up to you um I just find it really easy to work with like a little sandwich bag and cut the corner off and do it that way. It's really quick and easy. So I do that. And so before I get started on actually making the Oreos, I'm gonna go ahead and melt down some semi-sweet chocolate because I'm also gonna be making a second treat and I wanted to use up all of the white chocolate that I melted and I knew that I wouldn't be using all of it on the Oreos so I just wanted to make sure that whatever was dripping off of it and whatever was left over that I could use on the second treat that I'm making so you're gonna see that I'm kind of preparing it all on top of a baking sheet that has chocolate spread on it so just beware that's what I'm doing I'm kind of working on two treats at the same time here So all I'm doing is laying the Oreos out and then I'm squeezing the chocolate onto them to make it look like a mummy, like little mummy wrapping on it. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick some edible eyes on them. come out aren't they adorable I don't I just think they're so cute and so next up is a Halloween bark this is really easy you know you can do this pretty much for any holiday just change up the sprinkles and some of the toppings and you can make a Halloween bark a Christmas bark a Valentine's Day bark a birthday bark whatever you want to do and so obviously we're doing Halloween. So I'm just crushing up some Oreos. I've got some Halloween sprinkles. And then I actually, I wanted to put pretzels on them and I forgot at first. So I just popped this pan into my oven real quick, which was still warm. 
and it just remelted a little bit and then I pressed some of the pretzels on there and it worked just fine. Came out just fine. And it took me all of like five minutes to make that Halloween bark. I mean, it just is so simple. It's so quick. Once you've got everything on it that you want, pop it in your fridge for like 15 to 20 minutes and you're good. Next up is one of my favorites, these one-eye cookie monsters that I made. Now this is a cookie recipe that I've made multiple times. I really love it. Um, it's just brownie cookies. And then to make it Halloween themed, I just added whatever I had left of the edible eyes. And I think it came out pretty cute. And again, this recipe is very quick, very simple. All you wanna do is get all of your ingredients, put it in a bowl together, mix it up, it kind of, it, it's like a thick sort of a cookie dough, but I promise you it comes out perfect every time. It is delicious. This is a recipe that I will be putting up on my blog. I don't currently have it up there yet. I'm still working on rolling these out, but check back because I will be getting this one up on my blog in the near future. But for now, I'll go ahead and tell you the recipe. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna add one cup of flour, half a cup of cocoa powder, half a cup of whatever kind of sugar you've got. I just have raw cane sugar, that's what we like. You wanna do 3 fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder, six tablespoons of oil. I just use canola oil. It's, you know, it's pretty much tasteless. That's what I use. If you want, coconut oil is really good, but one of my kids has a coconut oil allergy, so I just steer clear of that if it's something that I know she's going to eat. Um, so yeah, six tablespoons of your choice of oil, two tablespoons of milk, and I use oat milk in this recipe. I use pretty much all of my recipes. And one and a half to two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then a fourth to a half of a cup of chocolate chips. I use the mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. Use what you've got, what you like. These would also be really good with white chocolate chips or like a caramel chip. That would be good. The peanut butter chips would be good in this if you like the peanut butter chocolate combo. So you just go ahead, mix all of your dry ingredients together so that they're mixed really well, and then go ahead and add in all of your wet ingredients and just slowly fold the dough over working it together until it comes into this nice sort of dough that you'll see it, it pulls away from the bowl, it doesn't stick, it's, it's very easy to work with. And then all you're gonna do is you can see, I like to use a cookie scoop. You can use a spoon. You can just grab it with your hands, totally up to you. I just prefer a cookie scoop. They come out pretty uniform, all about the same size. So I just go ahead and scoop them out and then I'll roll them into balls and pop them in the oven. You wanna go ahead and have your oven at 325 degrees and you just bake them for 10 minutes.
Once they're done baking, go ahead and cool them on a cooling rack for a couple minutes. And that's when I went and I put on the little edible eyes. Look at those cuties, little one-eyed cutie pies. <laughs> All right, next up, this one, again, this is a simple recipe, but this one is more time consuming, at least for me, because the cookie cutter that I have is just the shape of a pumpkin. I do not have one that specifically looks like a jack-o'-lantern and has the face. So I had to go and hand cut all of these with a knife. So it's a little more time consuming, but again, it's really simple. The kids love to get involved in this. It's easy and they're delicious. These pumpkin shaped little jack-o'-lantern cookies are delicious and this is a recipe that I already have up on my blog so I'll go ahead and link that down below so you can go ahead and make these if you'd like to So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just going ahead and creaming together the butter, the sugar, and the vanilla until it gets light and fluffy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add one egg at a time. The recipe calls for two eggs. You just wanna go ahead and add one at a time and then mix it well so that it's fully incorporated. Once you've got both of your eggs in, go ahead and add all of the dry ingredients and mix it up. It's gonna give it about five minutes and it's gonna form a really nice dough and it's not gonna stick to the bowl. You're gonna know when it's ready to take it out.
you want to do is once your dough is ready, flour your work surface. I have to flour pretty generously because of the type of countertops that we have here. Everything sticks to them. So I flour pretty generously, but if you've got nice countertops, you probably don't have to use as much flour. But just go ahead and take your dough out. You're going to want to roll it into a ball and then I flatten it a little bit. I roll it out a little bit and then I cut the dough in half. And then you want to make that into two separate balls. And the first one, you can go ahead and wrap it in plastic wrap and toss it in the fridge to let it chill while you're working with one half of the dough. And so then all you're going to do is you want to roll out your dough until it's about a fourth of an inch thick or so. And then you're going to go ahead and just use your cookie cutter and get as many pumpkins cut out as you can. And just keep rolling out the dough and working it, rolling it to about fourth of an inch and using your cookie cutter. And just do that until all of that first half of the dough is gone. And what I like to do is line a baking sheet with some wax paper and I put the um, cookies that are cut out I put them on there and I pop them in the freezer for about 15 minutes so they harden up and I do that just before baking them <laughs> the second half of the dough you're going to do the same thing as the first half but like I said I don't have a cookie cutter that has like the little eyes and the mouth shape on it so I had to go through with a knife and just cut those faces out so that's really the most time consuming part but it still only takes you about 10 minutes so it's it's really not bad <laughs> and that way you can kind of like if you wanted to you could make all different faces I'm just very boring and I just did the same smile for everyone but I still think they're cute um, but then the same thing with those. Go ahead, pop them on a baking sheet lined with wax paper so they don't stick and put them in your freezer for about 15 minutes before baking them. And then when you bake them, you want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees and bake them for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're just like lightly golden brown. And then let them cool completely before you move on to the next step where you're filling them.
And so while everything's cooling, you can go ahead and mix together your cinnamon sugar topping and go ahead and melt a couple tablespoons of butter on the stove because all of the little jack-o'-lantern faces, you wanna brush those with a little bit of butter and then you're gonna dip them in the cinnamon sugar topping. Once that's done, you'll be ready to fill them. So then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and melt down your chocolate. I've got 12 ounces of semi-sweet mini chocolate chips here, and I'm just going ahead and melting those down. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna grab one of the bottom half of the cookies, slather it with a couple tablespoons of the chocolate, and then top it with one of the cinnamon sugar topped little faces, and then just push it together like a little sandwich. <laughs> cutie. Look at that little cinnamon sugar sparkly little chocolatey cutie. And if you wanted to, you could absolutely add some other flavors like um, like nutmeg and ginger to this recipe. I know those are great fall flavors. My family and myself, we just aren't real lovers of nutmeg or ginger, so we don't add that to the recipe. But if you'd like to, you absolutely can. So like I said, go ahead over to my blog and check out that recipe. I'll have it linked below for you. <music> And then next up is a really quick, just easy snack that my kids love. I've got two semi picky eaters on my hands, but they love hard boiled eggs and they love deviled eggs. And so these, I just tried to make them look like little pumpkins. So I used a green onion as a stem. I put a good amount of paprika on them, but they're just roasted red pepper deviled eggs. Very simple. I'm sure everybody and their mother knows how to make deviled eggs. <laughs> 
<laughs> go ahead and cook your eggs. You want to mash up the yolks. I add a little mayonnaise, a little honey mustard, some paprika, some salt, some pepper, and then I cut up some roasted red peppers and just added those right in and mixed it well and just salt and pepper to taste. <laughs> deviled eggs with them. I just topped them with a little more paprika to give them that nice orangey red color. And then I just cut some green onions to make like little pumpkin stems. Super quick, super easy. And then last but certainly not least, this is one of my family's favorite dips. It's a cheesy spinach dip that I make. It is so good and it's pretty versatile. You could totally add some other vegetables and different types of cheeses if you want to. That's that's absolutely fine. It'll still taste great, I guarantee it. Um, so all you want to do is you can use frozen spinach for this. I just never really have frozen spinach. We typically just buy it like bagged or just like fresh spinach. So I just go ahead and the first thing is to cook down the spinach and then try and drain as much of the liquid out of it as you can. And then really all you do is chop up whatever vegetables you're going to use and add everything to one pot or one like baking dish. And so I've got some tomatoes, the spinach... I've got red onion and then one eight ounce block of cream cheese. Just go and dice that up as best as you can. I've got a block of cheddar cheese. You can use Monterey Jack. You can use sharp cheddar. You could use feta cheese if you want. You could use whatever kind of cheese you want. Pepper Jack, whatever you want to do. Um, you can add jalapenos to this or green chilies. That would be really good and give it a little extra spicy kick if that's something you're into. Just add about a fourth of a cup of milk here. Again, I'm using oat milk because we're pretty um, dairy-free here. Just mix everything up together in a bowl, in a baking dish, and then pop it in your oven. I usually bake it at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes because I like it to get pretty browned on top. And then boom, she's done. And this is so good. We love to have this with crackers. It's really good with tortilla chips. Uh, but I mean, yeah, just, it is so good. It is so, so good. Jeremy will even just eat this as like a soup. <laughs> He'll just eat it out of a bowl with a spoon. I kid you not. He loves this and I don't blame him. It is so delicious and so easy. I mean, literally do a little bit of prep by chopping things up, mix them in a bowl together and put it in your oven to bake and go do something else. And so that is it, you guys. Six very quick, easy recipes that you probably already have the things on hand for to make them. If you're hosting a party or you're going to a holiday party, maybe these are some things that you'd like to try out and like to bring. You can get your kids involved and have fun with it. Either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing these recipes. This was pretty fun for me to um, put this video together. And like I said, some of these recipes I already have up on my blog and then the rest I'm trying to roll out onto my blog. It's just taking some time, but I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great holiday and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.